Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to revise Maths Paper 1 that was written in November 2016. First question is requiring us to find the value of 0 0.4 times 0, 0,002, giving the answer as a decimal fraction. 2 times 4 is equals to 8. We are going to count the number of decimal places after comma. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. So our answer should have 4 decimal places. We are going to add 3 zeros for us to have 4 decimal places. Therefore, our answer is going to be 0, 0,0008. But the question is requiring us to express our answer as a decimal fraction. A decimal fraction is a fraction whose denominator is, is raised to the power of 10. Either we are going to say over 10, over 100, over 1000, like that. So in this case, we have four decimal places after comma. So it is going to be 8 over 10,000. Part B is reading, simplify 2 fifths of 15x minus 3x times 1 and a third. So we are going to solve this 2 fifths of 15x separately. After that, we are going to combine our answer. So we are saying, we are going to say 2 fifth times 15x. Let's first simplify this section. We say 5 into 5, 1. 5 into 15 is 3. 2 times 3x, we get 6x. And we solve this part. It is saying 3x times 1 and a third. We need to convert 1 and a third into an um, improper fraction. It is going to be 4 over 3. So we say 3 into 3, 1. 3 into 3x is 1x. 1x times 4, we are getting 4x. And we now need to say 6x minus 4x to get our final answer is 2x. This was complete solution for number one. Let us move on to number two. Number two, express 2.54 times 10 to the power of negative one in ordinary form. So it, have, uh, it is raised to the power of um, negative one. 10 is raised to the power of negative one. So it means that the answer is going to have one zero. So it is going to be 0 0.254. Part B, we want to express this 0 0.254 as a fraction in its lowest terms. So first of all, we need to express it as a decimal fraction. It is going to be 254 since it has uh, three decimal places after comma. It is going to be over 1,000. We are going to reduce it. If we say 2 into 2, it's 1. 2 into 5, it's 2, remainder 1. 2 into 14, it's 7. 2 into 1,000, it's 500. We can't reduce this further. So our final answer is going to be 127 over 500. Part C, we want to express this as a percentage. If you want to express from a fraction to a percentage, you just multiply by 100. So we say 127 over 500 times 100. This zero cancel this zero. So, 
we are going to have uh, 127 over 5. We say 5 into 5 is 1, 5 into 12 is 2, remainder 2, 5 into 27 is 5, remainder 2, 5 into 20 is 4. Therefore, our final answer is going to be 25.4%. This was the complete solution for number two. Let us move on to number three. Number three A, evaluate two to the power of three minus two to the power of zero. Two to the power of three is eight. If we say two times two, we get four. Four times two, we get eight. And n number to the power of zero is one. Eight minus one, is equals to seven. That is going to be our final answer on part A. In part B, we want to find the square root of 1.6 times 10 squared plus 9. We are going to apply board mass inside the root. So it means that we are going to multiply 1.6 times 10 squared before we do the addition. If we say 1.6 times 10 squared, we get 160. 160 plus 9 is equal to 169. So we want to find the square root of 169. The square root of 169 is plus or minus 13. So it is either 13 or minus 13. Let's move on to number 4. Number 4a, evaluate 413 base 5 minus 34 base 5, giving the answer in base 5. If we say 3 minus 4, it can't. We are going to borrow a base from this side. So after borrowing that base, we add it on 3 so that we are going to have 3 plus 5. And after borrowing that base, we subtract and we are going to have 0. So 3 plus 5 is equals to 8. 8 minus 4 is equals to 4. If we say 0 minus 3, it can't. We are going to borrow a base here so that we are going to remain with 3. We add that base, which is 5. 0 plus 5 is 5. Minus 3 is 2. 3 minus 0 is 3. Therefore, our final answer is 324 base 5. Part B. Express... 78 base 9 is a number in base 6. The first step is to express uh, 78 base 9 to base 10. So we are going to expand in powers of 9. We have 9 to the power of 0 and 9 to the power of 1. We fit in our value which is 78. We say 9, 9 to the power of 1 is 9 times 7, we get 63 plus 9 to the power of 0 is 1. 1 times 8 is equals to 8. 63 plus 8 is equals to 71 base 10. We now need to convert from 71 base 10 to base 6. We are going to divide by 6. 6 into 71 is 11, remainder 5. 6 into 11 is 1, remainder 5. 6 into 1 is 0, remainder 1. We are going to write our answer coming downwards, going upwards. So... Our final answer is going to be 155 base 6. Let us move on to number 5. 
Number 5A, factorize completely 6MN minus 3N. The highest common factor is 3N. We are going to factor it out. 6MN divided by 3N is 2M. 3N minus 3N divided by 3N is minus 1. This is going to be our final answer. And let us move on to part B. Remove the brackets and simplify x minus 2y minus 3 times x minus 2y. We are going to add the like terms. Minus 2y plus 6y, we get 4y. x minus 3x is equal to minus 2x. We need to factorize this expression. The highest common factor is 2. We factor it out. 4y divided by 2 is equal to 2y. Minus 2x divided by 2 is minus x. This is going to be our final answer. Let's just move on to number 6. Solve the simultaneous equations. 3x minus 2y is equal to 9. 4x plus y is equal to 1. We want to solve these simultaneous equations using the elimination method. Let's say we want to eliminate y. We are going to multiply the first equation by 1 and the second equation by 2. 1 times 3x is 3x minus 2y is equal to 9. 2 times 4x is 8x. 2 times y is plus 2y. 2 times 1 is equal to 2. So we need a positive sign to eliminate y. 3x plus 8x is 11x. 2 minus 2y plus 2y is 0. 9 plus 2 is 11. We divide both sides by 11. Therefore, our x is going to be 1. We now need to substitute that 1 in n of the equations. Let's say we substitute in the second equation. We are going to say 4 times, we substitute this x, say 4 times 1 plus y is equals to 1. 4 plus y is equals to 1. We shift this 4 to this right side of the equation. Therefore, our y is going to be 1 minus 4, which is equals to minus 3. Our final answers are x is equals to 1 and y is equals to minus 3. Let's move on to number 7. Number 7, express 61.7 in degrees and minutes. So we are saying we have 61 degrees plus 0 0.7 degrees. In one degree is equal to 60 minutes. What about 0 0.7? We are going to, it is going to be less. So to get 0 0.7, we say 7 over 10 times 60 and we get 42 minutes. Therefore, our final answer is going to be 61 degrees 42 minutes. That was all about uh, number 7a. In 7b, we want to express 11 and 2 thirds meters per second in kilometers per hour. To convert from meters per second to kilometers per hour, you just need to multiply by 3.6. Let's see convert this mixed fraction into improper fraction. It is going to be 11 times 3 is 33 plus 2. We have 35 over 3. And we multiply by 3.6. 3 into 3, 1, 3 into 3, 1, 3 into 6, 2. So we want to calculate 35 times 1.2. So 
So we say 1 times 5, we get 5. 1 times 3 is 3. And then 2 times 5 is 10, care 1. 2 times 3, 6 plus 1, 7. 0 plus 0, 0. 5 plus 7, 2. 12, care 1. 1 plus 3, 4. And we have one decimal place. So our answer is going to be 42 kilometers per hour. Let's move on to number 7, to number 8. Number 8a, find the function of minus 2, given that function of x is x squared over 4 minus 5 over 4. We are going to substitute x by minus 2. So we are saying minus 2 squared over 4 minus 5 over 4. Minus 2 squared, we are going to get him uh, positive 4. We are saying positive 4 over 4 minus 5 over 4. Next step, we are going to find the lowest common multiple of our denominator, which is uh, 4. 4 into 4, it's 1. 1 times 4, we get 4. 4 into 4, it's 1. 1 times minus uh, 5, we get minus 5. 4 minus 5 is equals to minus 1 over 4. That is going to be our final answer, which is minus 1 quarter. And in part B, find the value of y plus z to the power of x, given that x is equals to 2, y is equals to minus 2, and z is equals to 5. So we have um, y plus z to the power of x. Our y is minus 2. And our z is 5. We are going to raise it to the power of x, which is 2. We solve what is inside the bracket first. If we say minus 2 plus 5, we get 3. And we raise 3 to the power of 2 to get our final answer is 9. That was all about number 8. Let us move on to number 9. Number 9a, the interior angles of a regular polygon are 144 degrees each. Find the number of sides of the polygon. The formula of finding the interior angle is the sum of the interior angle in a polygon. The formula is 9 minus n minus 2 times 180. This is the formula of finding the sum of interior. And we want to find the number of sides. So we are going to divide by n. So this formula is the formula of finding the interior angle. We are told that the interior angle is 144. So we say n minus 2 times 180 over n is equals to 144. We want to make n the subject of formula. Let us multiply both sides by n to remove that bracket, that fraction, I mean. So we say 180 times n, we get 180 n. 180 times minus 2 is equals to minus 360, which is equals to 144 n we shift these three cities to this side it is going to be positive three cities we shift this 144 it is going to be minus 144 n so we have 180 n minus 144 n is equals to three cities 180 minus 144 we get 36 n this is equals to three cities we divide both sides by 36. 36 in 36, 1. 1 times n is equals to n. 36 into 360 is 10. Therefore, the number of sides of that polygon is 10. 
Part B, state the number of lines of symmetry of the polygon. The number of lines of symmetry is going to be 10 since it is a regular polygon which, with all sides which are equal. Therefore, part B, we are going to obtain number of lines of symmetry is 10. Let's move on to number 10. 10A, find the value of 3 root 2 times 5 root 2. So when we are multiplying says, we say 3 times 5, and we multiply what is inside the roots, which is the 2 times 2. If we say 3 times 5, we get 15 times root of 4, and the root of 4 is 2. So we are saying 15 times 2 to get our answer is 30. And then in part B, given that 6,782 times 65 is equals to 440,830, find the value of 1, 6.782 times uh, 0 0.65. So in this case, we are not supposed to calculate. We are supposed to use the given information. We can see that uh, we have the five decimal places after comma. We have one, two, three, four, five. So our answer should also have five decimal places after comma. So we are going to say four comma four zero. 830 that is going to be our answer let's move on to final question we want to find 440,830 divided by 6.5 in this case we are dividing by 6.5 when dividing decimals the the div dividend which is 6.5 should be a positive whole number should be a whole number so we need to make 6.5 to be a whole number we multiply by 10 so it means that even our answer which is 6782 is going to be multiplied by 10 for us to get our final answer is 67820 let's move on to number 11 on a map, a length of 5 centimeters represents an actual distance of 1 kilometer. Express the scale of the map in the form 1s to n. So we are given that 5 centimeter is representing 1 kilometer. We divide by 5 for us to remain with 1 centimeter. So 5 into 5 is 1. We now have our 1 centimeter. And we need to convert this 1 kilometer into centimeters. In 1 kilometer, we have 100,000 centimeters. So we divide by 5. 5 into 100,000 is equal to 20,000. Therefore, our answer is going to be 1 is to 20,000. We are saying one centimeter is representing um, 20,000 centimeters. Calculate the actual distance in kilometers represented by 21 centimeters. So we are saying one centimeter is representing one kilometer. What about 21 centimeters? It is going to be more. So we say 21 over 1 times 1 kilometer, and we get, sorry, let me correct. It is um, 5 centimeters is representing 1 kilometer. What about 21 centimeters? It is going to be more. So we are saying 21 over 5 times 1 kilometer. 5 into 5, 1. 5 into 21, it's 4, remainder 1. 5 into 10 is 2. Therefore, our final answer is going to be 4.2 kilometers.
kilometers. Let's move on to number 12. Number 12, a cuboid of height 8 centimeters. Yes, a volume of 320 cubic centimeters. Find the volume of similar cuboid of height 6 centimeters. The ratio of length is um, 6 as to 8. We can reduce it by dividing uh, by 2 so that we have uh, 3 as to 4. This is the ratio of length and the ratio of volume. Ratio of volume we cube ratio of length it means that we are going to say 3 to the power of 3 is to 4 to the power of 3 3 to the power of 3 is 27 and then 4 to the power of 3 is 64 this is the ratio of volume find the volume of similar cuboid of height 6 centimeters so we are saying if 64 this ratio of 64 is from 320 cubic centimeters. What about 27? It is going to be less. So we say 27 over 64 times 320. Uh, if we say 8 into 64, we get 8. 8 into 32 is um, 4 and 8 into 81, 8 into 40, we are getting 5. 27 times 5 is equals to 135. Therefore, the volume of the similar cuboid is going to be 135 cubic centimeters. Let us move on to number 13. Number 13, given that H is equals to M times V squared U minus U squared over 2GX, make U the subject of the formula. First, we are going to multiply both sides by 2GX. We multiply by 2GX here so that this cancel this. So we now have 2GXH is equals to M times V squared minus U squared. We divide both sides by M and we are going to have V squared minus U squared. We shift this U squared to be to the left side of the equation. So that it is going to be positive u squared is equals to two uh, is equals to v v squared minus two g x h over m. Now we want to make u the subject of formula. We are going to multiply both sides by to the power of half so that we remain with u as our subject of formula u is equals to the square root of v squared minus 2gxh over m so it is plus or minus v squared minus 2gxh over m number 14 in the diagram the points a b c d and e lie on the circumference of the circle with center O. E, B, and A, C meet at F. T, A is a tangent to the circle at A. C, D, E is equals to 128 degrees and B, F, C is equals to 65 degrees. Calculate T, A, E. T, A, E is this angle before we calculate this TAE, we need to find the angle CAE. CAE is this angle. We are going to apply the theorem that says 
opposite angles of cyclic quad they sum up to 180 degrees so to get him cae we say 180 minus 128 and we get 52 it means we have 52 degrees is our cae now to find tae we are going to apply the theorem that states that a diameter or a radius forms 90 degrees the angle that is between a tangent and a radius is 90 degrees so to get tae we say 90 minus 52 tae is equals to 90 minus 52 which is equals to 38 degrees and we want to calculate a e b a e b it is this angle that we want to calculate first we need to find this angle which is a f e this angle we are saying angles on a straight line sums to 180 so if we say 180 minus 65 we get 115 this angle is 115 and this angle is going to be 65 because if we say 65 plus 115 we get 180 so this angle is equal to uh, 65 so to get a e b we are going to say angles in a triangle sums to 180 so we say a e b is equals to 180 minus 52 plus 65 this is equals to 180 minus 52 plus 65 is 117 180 minus 117 is equals to 63 degrees. Number 15, in the diagram, QRS is a straight line and PQR is a triangle such that PQR is equals to 90 degrees, PQ is equals to 12 centimeters and QR is equals to 5 centimeters. Calculate PR want to calculate this length of PR, we are going to apply the Pythagoras theorem. It said that hype squared, which is PR squared, is equal to 12 squared plus 5 squared. PR squared is equal to uh, 144 plus 25, which is equal to 169. So to get PR, we are going to say the square root of 169, which is equals to 13 centimeters. Express the answer as a common fraction. Write down the value of tan QPR. Tan QPR, this tan. We are going to apply the trigonometric ratio. It is Chasho Tao in short. So we want to find this tan. We are going to say is equals to opposite over adjacent. The opposite of this angle is 5 and the adjacent is 12. Therefore, our final answer is going to be 5 over 12. And we finally want to find cos PRS, PRS, it is this angle that we want to find. But before we find cos PRS, we need to find cos, cos PRQ, this angle. So if we apply our trigonometric ratio cos is adjacent over hype the adjacent of uh, this angle is 5 and the hype is uh, this 18 
So cos P R Q is equals to 5 over 13. We now need to find cos P R S. You should know that acute cos is positive and obtuse cos is negative. Therefore, our final answer is going to be minus 5 over 13. This was the complete solution for number 15. Let's move on to number 16. The graph shows the motion of a car which decelerates uniformly from a speed of 25 meters per second until it comes to rest in 10 seconds. Calculate the deceleration of the car during the 10 seconds. The formula to calculate deceleration is final velocity minus initial velocity over time taken. Final velocity is zero. Initial velocity is 25. Time taken is 10. So we are saying zero minus 25, which is minus 25 divided by 10, and we obtain minus 2.5 meters per second squared. Part B, we want to calculate the total distance traveled in the 10 seconds. In velocity time graph, the total distance is calculated by uh, saying area of the graph. We can see that this graph is a triangle so we are going to say half base times height. Our base is 10 and our height is 25. 2 into 2, 1. 2 into 10 is 5. 5 times 25 is 125 and it is going to be in meters. Therefore, the total distance traveled in the 10 seconds is 125 meters. Given that u varies jointly as x and as the square of y, express u in terms of x, y, and a constant k. Let us interpret mathematically. We are saying u varies as, um, jointly as x and square of y. So we need to remove these values. We remove it by introducing an equal sign and a constant. By doing this, we answer our part A. And we want to move on to part B. Find the value of K if U is equals to 14, when X is equals to 1, and Y is equals to 2. First, let's make K the subject of formula. We are going to say u is equals to k x y squared. We divide both sides by x y squared so that we remain with k as a subject of formula. We substitute u by 14 and our x is 1, our y is 2, we square it. So we are having 14 over 4 is equals to k. We reduce it. 2 into 14 is 7. 2 into 4 is 2. Therefore, the value of k is 7 over 2. Find the value of u when x is equals to 6 and y is equals to 3. We are saying u is equals to k x y squared we substitute our k u is equals to 7 over 2 x y squared and then we are going to substitute 6 and 3 u is equals to 7 over 2 times 6 times 3 squared which is 9 2 into 2 1 2 into 6 3 7 times 3 is 21. 21 times 9 is equals to 189. 
This was the solution for number 17. Let's move on to number 18. The equation of a straight line is given as 3y minus 2x minus 6 is equals to 0. Find the gradient of the line. So the equation of line is y is equals to mx plus c. We need to arrange our equation to be in this form. So we have 3y and this minus 2x is going to shift to the right side to be positive 2, 2x, right? And this minus 6 is going to be plus 6. We divide both sides by 3 so that we remain with y is equals to 2 thirds x plus 2. Our gradient is m and it is represented by 2 thirds. Therefore, the gradient of the line is equals to 2 over 3. Gradient is equals to 2 over 3. And then in part B, find the coordinates of the points where the line crosses the y-axis. When it crosses the y-axis, the x-axis is going to be 0. So we are saying y is equals to 2 thirds times 0 plus 2 which is equals to 2. Or we just look on the equation. Uh, the coordinate when it crosses the y-axis is, um, is this C. It is called the y-intercept. Therefore, it is going to be, our y is going to be 2. Finally, on part C, we want to find the equation in the form AX plus BY is equals to C of a straight line parallel to the line 3y minus 2x minus 6 is equals to 0 and passing through minus 5, 2. Parallel lines have equal gradients. So the equation of the line is y is equals to mx plus c. Our y is 2. Our gradient is 2 thirds. And our x is uh, minus 5. We want to find the value of c. So um, if we say um, 2 thirds times minus 5, we are going to get minus 10 over 3 plus c. We want to make c the subject of formula. So we are going to shift this this minus 10 over 3 to this side, it is going to be 2 plus 10 over 3 is equals to C. So um, the lowest common mod is 3, 1 into 3, it's uh, 3 times 2, we get 6, 3 into 3, 1 times 10, we get uh, 10. So we are having our C is 16 over 3. We are going to write Y is equals to the gradient is 2 thirds X plus this C, which is equals to 16 over 3. We want to express it to be in this form, which is the AX plus BY. So um, uh, we are going to write um, minus 2 thirds x and then um, we write our plus y is equals to 16 over 3. And we multiply, we want to move these fractions, we multiply by 3 all the terms. So finally, we are going to have minus 2x uh, plus 3y is equals to 16. Because we need our equation to be in this form, ax plus by is equals to c. So we are going to start with minus 2x 
and we write plus 3y is equals to 16. That was all about number 18. Let's move on to number 19. Number 19, given that log P is equals to 2.4 and log Q is equals to 0 0.4, evaluate log 1 over P. So if we are dividing uh, the logs, you subtract. So we are going to say log 1 minus log P. And log 1 is 0 minus log p the log p is 2.4 therefore our answer is going to be minus 2.4 in part b we want to calculate log p squared divided by log q so we are going to say uh, we apply the power rule of logarithm so we are going to say log p squared is equals to 2 log p over log q. Uh, log p is 2.4. So we are saying 2 times 2.4. And when we are dividing, we subtract. We are going to subtract log q, which is 0 0.4. 2 times 2.4 is equals to 4.8 minus 0 0.4 we get 4.4 is our final answer this was the solution for number 19 let's move on to number 20 number 20 a salesman receives a basic salary of 200 dollars a month in addition he is paid a commission of 5% on his sales. Calculate the gross salary in a month during which his sales amounted to $4,000. should understand that gross salary is equals to basic salary plus commission. Basic salary is $200. And commission is 5% of the sales, which is 5 over 100 times 4,000. So this zero, cancel this zero, this zero, cancel this zero. 5 times 40 is equal to 200. We are going to say 200 plus 200 to get gross salary of $400. Part B. The side of an equilateral triangle is 6 cm to the nearest cm. Calculate the least possible perimeter of the triangle. So the range in which the length lies is from 5.5 to 6.4. If we say 5.5 to the nearest cm, we get 6 cm. If we say 6.4 to the nearest centimeter, we get 6 centimeters. In this case, we want to calculate the least possible perimeter of the triangle. So we first need to find the least possible length. The least possible length is 5.5 centimeters. And an equilateral triangle, it has three sides which are equal. We have 5.5 here. 5.5 here and 5.5 here. So perimeter is the distance around the shape. So we are going to say 5.5 times 3, which is equals to 5 times 3, 15, K1. 5 times 3, 15, K plus this one, 16. Therefore, our final answer is going to be 16.5 centimeters. This was all about number 20. Let us move on to number 21. Number 21, it is given that OA is equals to 3P minus 2Q and OB is equals to P plus 7Q. Find the vector AB in terms of P and Q. So we want to calculate AB. We are going to say AB 
is equals to AO plus OB. In this case, we are given vector OA, but we want AO, so we are going to change the signs of OA. We have 3P, we are going to write minus 3P. We have minus 2Q, we are going to write plus 2Q plus OB, which is P plus 7Q. We add the like terms. If we say 2Q plus 7Q, we get 9Q. Minus 3P plus P, we get minus 2P. This qualifies to be the vector AB. Part B. Given also that vector AB is equals to 2MP plus bracket M minus NQ, find the value of N and the value of N. We are saying AB, which is 9Q minus 2P, is equals to 2MP plus M minus N. Q. We want to remove these brackets, so we are going to say 9Q minus 2P is equals to 2MP plus M plus times Q is MQ minus NQ. We are going to group Q on their own. We have 9Q is equals to MQ minus n q we divide all the terms by q to remove q so we are going to remain with m 9 is equals to m minus n this is in, we have two m here sorry this is our equation one and then in our second equation we have minus two P is equals to 2MP. We divide all the terms by P. So we are going to remain with um, minus 2 is equals to 2M. We divide both sides by 2. Our M is going to be minus 1. We are going to, to substitute this minus 1 in our first equation. Our first equation is reading A, 9 is equals to 2M minus N. 9 is equals to 2 times minus 1 minus N. We shift this minus N. It is going to be positive N is equals to minus 2. If we shift 9, it is going to be minus 9. Therefore, n is equals to minus 11. That was all about number 21. Let us move on to number 22. In the diagram, PQR is a triangle in which RPQ is equals to 30 degrees. P R Q is equal to 75 degrees and R Q is equal to 8 centimeters. Using as much of the information given below as is necessary, calculate P Q. We want to calculate the length of P Q. Let us position small letters on our diagram. They are placed opposite side of the capital letter. We have our small letter P here our small letter R here, and our small letter Q here. We want to find the length of PQ using the sine rule. We are going to say R over sine R is equal to P over sine P. So we make R the subject of formula by multiplying both sides by sine R. This sine R is going to cancel this sine R so that we have R as the subject of the formula. Our small letter P is 8. 
sin r is sin 75 over sin p uh, the sin p is sin 30 and we say 8 times sin 75 sin 75 is 0 0.97 and sin 30 is equals to 0 0.5 if we say 8 times 0 0.97 divided by 0 0.5, we obtain our answer is 15.52 centimeters. So it means that this PQ is equals to 15.52 centimeters. Now we want to calculate the area of triangle PQR, we can't use the formula of saying half base times height because we don't have the length of this height unless we first find the this perpendicular height but it is going to be a long method a short method is of um, using this formula area of triangle is equals to half a B sin theta. Um, we are going to say we, we need to find this angle first. We have these two angles, 30 and 75, and we know that um, uh, angles in a triangle sums to 180. So we are going to say 180 minus 30 plus 75, and we obtain our RQP is 75. So we are going to say half times our, um, we are going to take this 8 and this 15.52 and our sine theta is sine 75. Sine 75 is 0 0.97. 2 into 2, 1, 2 into 8, 4. 4 times 15.52 times 0 0.97, we get our final answer is 60.2 square centimeters. This was a complete solution for number 22. Let's move on to number 23. Number 23, the masses of 20 patients at a hospital are shown in the table. Calculate an estimate of the mean mass of the patients. To calculate the um, estimate of the mean mass, we are going to say the midpoint times 7 plus midpoint time, times 8 plus this midpoint times 5 all over the total frequency. So we are saying uh, 60 plus 70 over 2 times 7 plus 70 plus 80 over 2 times 8 plus 80 plus 100 over 2 times 5 all over 20. 60 plus 70 over 2 we get 65 so we say 65 times 7 plus 70 plus 8 divided by 2 is 75 times 8 plus 80 plus 100 is divided by 2 is 90 and we multiply it by 5 all over 20 65 times 7 is 455 75 times 8 is 600. 90 times 5 is 450. We say all over 20. The total is 1505 divided by 20. And we get our median, our mean mass is 75.25 kilograms. And then in part B, Two patients are chosen at random from the 20 patients. Find the probability that both have masses greater than 80 kgs. 
probability of um, picking the first patient whose mass is greater than 80 is 5 out of 20 and the probability of picking another patient is now going to be 4 over 19 since we have subtracted the first patient. So we are going to say 5 over 20 times 4 over 19. 5 into 5, 1, 5 into 20, 4, 4 into 4, 1, 4 into 4, 1. So we remain with 1 over 19 is our final answer. This was all about the statistics. Let's move on to number 24. The matrix 3003 represents a transformation X. Find the coordinates of the image of the point minus one four under x we are going to multiply this matrix by the point the coordinates of the point so we have a um, two by two matrix multiplying a two by one matrix therefore our answer is going to be a two by one so we say three zero zero three times minus one four three times minus one is equals to minus three zero times c four is zero zero times minus one is zero three times four is twelve so the coordinates is going to be minus three and twelve minus three for x coordinates and 12 for y coordinate and then describe fully the single transformation x the transformation is enlargement when describing enlargement you should state the scale factor and also the center of enlargement so um, it can be a one-way stretch or a shear uh, if it was the one-way stretch or a shear, uh, the scale factor was going to affect either x, y list y is invariant, or a scale factor was going to affect y, y list x is invariant. But in this case, we can see that uh, the scale factor is affecting both the x coordinate and the y coordinate. Therefore, that is why we are saying it is enlargement. And the scale factor is 3. The scale factor is this 3, which we are given. And now we need to find the center of enlargement. I'm going to draw a rough sketch diagram that is representing this information. This is a rough sketch diagram of our um, coordinates. For the object... The coordinate is minus 1, 4, and for the image, the coordinate is minus 3, min, uh, minus 3 and 12. We are informed that the scale factor is 3, so it means that to find the scale factor, we say the distance of the image from center of enlargement divided by the distance of the object from the center of enlargement. So in this case, if we put our center on, of enlargement at this point, point of origin, from this point to this point, we have um, three units. And from this point to this point, we have one unit. If we say three, divided by uh, 1, we are going to get a scale factor of 3. So it implies that the center of enlargement was 0, 0. Center of enlargement is equal to 0, 0. This was a solution for number 24. Let's move on to number 25. 25a, given that x and y are integers such that minus 4 uh, to 1 and 4 to 8 for the range of y, 
find the greatest value of 2y over 3x. So to find the greatest value, we are going to say 2 times y, which is 2 times 8 over 3 times x. We take the greatest possible value of x, which is 1. The highest possible value of y is 8. So we are going to say 2 times 8 over 3 times 1, and we get our final answer is 16 over 3, or we can write uh, 3 into 16, it is 5 remainder 1 over 3. We can write 16 over 3 or 5 and a third. And in part B, we want to solve a simultaneous inequality. x minus 2 is less than or equal to 4x plus 1, which is also less than 2x plus 4. So we solve this in group. For the first group, we are going to say x minus 2 is less than or equal to 4x plus 1. We shift this x from the side of the inequality to the right side of the inequality. It is going to be minus x. So we have 4x minus x. And we shift this plus 1. It is going to be minus 1. Minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3 is less than or equal to 3x. We divide both sides by 3. 3 minus 3 divided by 3 is minus 1. Minus 1 is less than or equal to x. We now need to solve the second part. We are saying uh, 4x plus 1 is strictly less than 2x plus 4. So we are going to shift these 2x to the left side of the inequality. It is going to be minus 2x. 4x minus 2x is equals to 2x is less than. We shift this one to the side. It is going to be minus 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. We divide both sides by 2. Therefore, x is strictly less than 3 over 2. We now need to combine our answer. We are saying minus 1 is less than or equal to x. x is also less than 3 over 2. This is going to be our final answer. Let's move on to number 25. Number 26. The Venn diagram shows the universal set with its subsets A and B. The numbers of elements in each region are expressed in terms of X as shown. Write an expression in terms of X for number of A union B. So when you're saying A union B, we are saying we are combining this set A and this set B. So we are going to add, we say, A union B is equals to X squared plus 12 minus X plus 16 plus X x squared minus x plus x is 0. 12 plus 16 is equals to 28. Therefore, the number of a union b is x squared plus 28. And then in part b, given that the number of, uni the number of universal set is equals to 40, form an equation in x ensure that it reduces to x squared plus 4x minus 12 is equals to 0. So we are saying um, a union b plus 4x is equals to 40. A union b is the x squared plus 28 and we add this 4x We are going to get 40. So we say x squared plus 4x. We shift this 40 to this side. It is going to be 
28 minus 40, which is equals to minus 12. Uh, therefore, we have managed to show that the equation reduces to x squared plus 4x minus 12 is equals to 0. In C part 1, we want to solve the equation x squared plus 4x minus 12. So um, we write x squared plus 4x minus 12 is equals to 0. The first step is to factorize this trinomial. We multiply x squared and minus 12 to get minus 12x squared. We look for two factors of minus 12x squared, which when we add, we get 4x. These two factors are 6x and minus 2x. Let us rewrite 4x as 6x minus 2x. We are going to have x squared plus 6x minus 2x minus 12 is equals to 0. We factorize this first group. The highest common factor is x. We say x squared divided by x, we get x. 6x divided by x is 6. We factor out minus 2. Minus 2x divided by, by minus 2 is x. Minus 12 divided by minus 2 is 6. And we have x plus 6. x minus 2 is equals to 0. Either x plus 6 is equals to 0. It implies that x is equals to minus 6 or x minus 2 is equals to 0. It implies that x is equals to 2. Therefore, x is equals to minus 6 or 2. And in part 2, hence find the number of a prime intersection b so in this case when we are saying a prime it means that we are not going to include a but we are going to take the elements that are um, in b only so if we exclude a we are going to remain with 16 plus x we are going to substitute the values of x which we have obtained. We, are, we have obtained minus 6 and 2. So either uh, the number of a prime intersection b is 16 minus 6 or 16 plus 2. If we say 16 minus 6, we get a value of 10. Or 16 plus 2, we get 18. Therefore, x is going to be, uh, the number of b is either 10 or 18. That was all about number 26. Let's move on to the final question, which is number 27. The diagram represents the plan of a floor of a room. All dimensions are in meters and all marked angles are right angles. Calculate the perimeter of the floor. Perimeter is the distance around the floor. So we need to finish off to label our diagram. Since we have one here, it also means that we have one here. Since we have two here, this is two again. And since we have six meters here, we are going to have six meters here. So perimeter, we add all these um, length. We are having 3 plus 1 plus 2 plus 6 plus 7 plus 6 plus 2 plus 1. And we, if we sum this, we are going to have... Uh, 28 meters. This is the perimeter of the floor. In part B, we want to calculate area of the floor. We are going to join this section so that we are going to say area of the floor 
is area of the small rectangle minus area of the rectangle that is inside. Area of the hot rectangle is length times width, which is 6 and 7, minus area of the rectangle inside, it is 3 times 1. So it is 42 minus 3, and we get our area is 39 square meters. And then part C, number of tiles to be fitted on the floor. If the area of each tile is 625 square centimeters, our units need to all to be either in square meters or in square centimeters. One square meter is equal to 10,000 square centimeters. What about 39 square meters? It is going to be more. So we are going to have 39 times 10,000, which is equal to 390,000 square centimeters. And to find the number of tiles, we are going to say 390,000 square centimeters divided by 625 square centimeters so we'll reduce it if we divide by 5 5 into 39 is 7 remainder 4 5 into 40 it's 8 so we have 78,000 5 divided by 625 625 divided by 5 is equals to 125 we divide again by 5, 5 into 125, we get 25, 5 into 17, 8, 5 into 7, it's 1, remainder 2, 5 into 28, it's 5, remainder 3, 5 into 30, it's 6, so we have 15,600 divided by 25. Uh, we reduce again by 5, 5 into 25 is 5, 5 into 15 is 3, 5 into 6 is 1, remainder 1, 5 into 10 is 2, 5 into 5 1, 5 into 31 is 6, remainder 1, 5 into 12 is 2, remainder 2, 5 into 20 is 4. Therefore, it means 624 tiles are needed. This marks the end of our patient paper that was written in November 2016. Thank you so much, guys, for following me on this channel. Kindly subscribe for my channel to grow. I love you all.